pity poor Mary, Queen of Scots. Way back in the late 1500s, Mary was thrown in prison, accused of plotting against her cousin, Queen Elizabeth of England. She thought she would get away with it because all of Mary's plans were in code. Unfortunately, those messages were intercepted. Um, Elizabeth I had a wonderful code breaker called Thomas Phillips. He cracked Mary's code, gave the decrypted messages to Elizabeth, and that was then used in evidence against her. And then in 1587, Mary's executed. All because her code is cracked. Simon Singh is an author and historian who follows the history of codes and ciphers in his new book called, simply enough, The Code Book. From the beheading of Mary to today's modern hackers, Singh traces the back and forth tug of war between code makers and code breakers. Take, for instance, the Second World War. The Germans and their Enigma code-making machine left the Allies at the mercy of the U-boats until brilliant mathematicians created their own code-breaking machine. Now, once you use a machine to make a code, you need to make a machine to break the code. And then you have the development of computers, uh, machines like Colossus. Computers and codes, codes and computers, they are natural partners. Modern day computers have allowed code makers to generate nearly foolproof ciphers. Encryption schemes that you may not understand, but if you've ever ordered a book or other merchandise online with a credit card, you've used cryptography. In fact, e-commerce couldn't exist without it. If you take away the cryptography, then you really don't have the internet revolution that we're having today. You certainly don't have the e-commerce revolution we're having today. And that's cutting inflation, it's changing the whole dynamics of, 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 of stock markets all over the world. So none of that's possible without encryption.